Hi hey guys, it's Robin and welcome to my channel. So today I have another fancy little 420 cake to share with all of you guys. And all the decorations are completely handmade and 100% edible. So you guys are going to like this one a lot, I promise. So let's get right into it. So for today's cake, we're going to be using three six inch layers of white velvet cake. And I've colored it, which is a little bit of green to help match our 420 theme. And one thing that always goes good with velvet cakes is cream cheese. So we're gonna be filling each of our layers with some delicious cream cheese frosting. But because this stuff is a bit on the soft side, you're gonna to wanna to create a perimeter of American buttercream before you fill each layer. Now, once we finish stacking and filling our layers, it's time to seal in all these crumbs. So I filled a large piping bag with some white American buttercream, and we're just applying a very generous coat all over our entire cake, which we're then going to smooth out using a small offset spatula. And we're just working to kind of smush all those lines together and make sure there's no air bubbles or gaps left in the end. And once everything is completely covered, I'm going to grab my bench scraper and we're gonna give this a few scrapes all the way around until my sides are nice and straight and even. And then we're just gonna clean off that top lip by carefully dragging my bench scraper from the outer edge inward until my entire cake is completely smooth and then we're gonna pop it in the fridge to chill while we work on some decorations. So the first thing we're gonna do is work on some of these little weed leaves to go all the way around the outside of the cake. And this is only a small cake, so three should do. And I've created a stencil, as you guys can see, which I've laid onto some freshly rolled fondant. And because I've cut these little lines in the stencil, they should leave a nice perforated image onto my freshly rolled fondant, which I'm then going to follow and carefully cut out using my X-Acto knife, as you guys can see. And this is a little bit time consuming, but if you allow your fondant to dry ever so slightly before you start cutting, it makes the job so much easier. So now that I finished cutting out the main shape of the leaf, I wanna give it some dimension. So I'm gonna use a Dresden veining tool, and this is the one that just kinda has a little point on the end. And we're gonna use that to give our leaf some veins. So what we're gonna do is start with the longer ones first, and we're also gonna create those little divider lines in between each of the leaves. And then once I finished filling all those in, we're gonna create the smaller veins that run off the center vein that runs down the center of each leaf. And now once we've finished filling in all of our veins, we're going to use a little bit of green colored dust and give our leaf some depth. So we're gonna use a very small, soft, fluffy brush. And we're going to take a little tiny bit on the brush and carefully dust it on the centers and the very outer edge of each leaf until we're happy with how that looks. And then we're gonna set that off to the side until we need it later on. All right, so the next thing we are going to make is some custom zigzag extra long rolling papers. So to make these, I've gone ahead and whipped up one of my fancy little stencils that I like to make when I do this kind of stuff. And as you guys can see, it's actually showing up really well on the orange fondant. And if you're a frequent watcher of my channel, you will know just how hard it is to actually see what I'm working on. And I know you guys ask me over and over and over again. So this is a perfect example of what I see when I pull that stencil off. So now hopefully you guys can understand a little bit better what I've been talking about. And bonus, now that I know it shows up so well on orange fondant, I should be able to do a nice little in-depth tutorial for you guys in the near future. So I'm sure most of you are probably wondering what it is I'm using to paint my image. And it is completely edible, I assure you. The darkest color is actually a full concentration gel food color in brown. And the lighter color is actually a mixture of white food color and a tiny, tiny drop of brown mixed in to give it that flesh tone. And to paint it all, I just used a very fine tip brush and voila, it's ready for the cake. Okay, so enough time has sufficiently passed and our cake is now nice and firm and ready for its second coat of icing. So we're just slathering on a nice, thick layer of that white American buttercream. And because our cake is so cold, it's setting up very quickly. And that's also helping us get it nice and smooth with our bench scraper, leaving us with a perfectly smooth finish on our frosting. 
And now we're just going to clean up that top lip a little bit, make that edge nice and sharp, and then we can stick our cake back in the fridge. So when it comes to 420 paraphernalia, there are so many different things you can make, like this cute little grinder that I created out of a simple circle shape, a couple of strips of fondant to create some dimension, and a couple of little pieces of fondant in the center to create some grinder blades. Then we finished it off with a little dusting of silver dust, and there we have it. It's ready for the cake. So I didn't show you absolutely everything I made for this cake. If I did, we might be here all day. But I went ahead and I dressed up my board with some black fondant. I created a personalized happy birthday message. I made a small ashtray, some little fake grinds, and I also made some little fondant doobies as well to help dress up the cake a little bit. Just some very simple things I know you guys would find easy to make. So sometimes when you make a lot of decorations for your cake, it can be a little bit difficult to figure out the placement because you want everything to have a really nice flow because where you place everything can really make or break your design. And I wanted this to have a very carefree, easy flowing vibe. So I went with a little bit of an off-center look. So my birthday message is off to the side. Then I took one of my weed leaves and I placed it where I wanted the front focal point of my cake to be. And everything else, Kind of flowed from there if you catch my drift because <laughs> even though it's off center it's still about creating and finding balance and i really love how this whole thing came together there's just so much to look at and it doesn't look too crowded it just it has a really nice flow and i really like it and i hope you guys absolutely love it too because i sure enjoyed making it for all of you well, that's it for today, guys. Like I said, I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, you guys know what to do. Leave me a big thumbs up and don't forget to leave me some love in that comment section too. And if you guys enjoyed this video so much, you would love to see more, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell and pop over to my channel and check out tons of awesome cakes and stay tuned because I'll be posting lots more. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.